Hey everybody, here is your task and instructions for today. Uh, go ahead and take out a piece of scratch paper, set it up to look like this, but with your name, obviously not the word name. Um, put the title on there, the date on there, and you are actually gonna access all of your work on Canvas. So you are going to log into Canvas, you are going to go to the algebra, uh, what am I trying to say, the algebra course, you're gonna click on modules, and then down at the very, very bottom um, of unit four, you are gonna see one that says 1110 unit four slide review, or sorry, unit four review slides, it's all the same. So what you're gonna do is this is set up, um, I mean, it would have been more interactive if I had been there, but it's essentially review questions, okay? And so you're gonna get a question and you're going to try to answer it. Sometimes you may need to show work, sometimes you may not. Like when you get into it, you'll see slide number one, I really don't think there's any work to show. It's just kind of a thinking question. So you're gonna record whatever your answer is, right? Let's say I think the answer is uh, J. Ha, huh, that's not an answer choice, so I didn't just give you an answer. You're gonna write down your answer. Um, and then when you click next, not next, sorry, when you go to the next slide on there, when you click the little arrow, don't click next. Y'all probably doesn't even say next. You're gonna see an answer along with an explanation, okay? So if you got it wrong, read that explanation, make sure you understand why. If you need to ask someone near you to explain it, do it. The second one, I really don't think there's any work to be shown. So I'm just gonna put, okay, uh, for question number two, I got the answer X. It's not an answer choice, so you're fine. On question three though, I would argue that there, you start to get actual questions. It says, when you get there, determine whether or not the table below is linear and or a direct variation situation. So I'm gonna set up the table that is given and so I might copy, okay, it goes four, eight, 12, 18, and then it goes six, 12, 18, 27. I'm not making this up, guys. It's when you get into the um, actual slides, you're gonna see this problem. And so then you're gonna do whatever work you need to do on that to decide, is it linear and is it a direct variation situation? And then you're gonna put your answer. There are definitely problems that you will need to show work on. Okay, not everything can be done in your head, especially when you get into questions that are asking you for like the slope intercept form of a line that passes through the point two negative two and is perpendicular to the line represented by. So I should have numbered it like this. I'm sorry, I'm gonna change my numbering. We're gonna call this slide one. The answer to slide one is on slide two. So this would actually be slide three Slide four shows its answer. This would be slide five. So we're gonna number this by slides, okay? When you get to slide seven, here's what it says. The equation that passes through the point two negative two and is perpendicular to the line y equals two fifths x plus two. Okay, let's unpack this problem a little bit. Well, the first piece of information, like this point, I can't really do anything with it just yet. But if I know that it has to be perpendicular to this one, well, I'm gonna go look at my notes about what perpendicular, how perpendicular works. And it says perpendicular slopes have to be the opposite or negative reciprocal. So this is my slope, right? So my new slope, will have to be the opposite. So instead of being a positive, it's gonna to have to be a negative. And instead of being two fifths, it now needs to be five over two. That's really the only useless information in this equation. I don't really care what the y-intercept was, okay? Now, I have a slope and I have a point. Okay, um, if you're stumped at how to use this, I can label. Well, this would be like a X1 and a Y1 piece of information. I got what I needed from this, so that's kind of gone. And let's see, if this is a slope, that would be an M. So I'm gonna go look at my formula chart, and I notice that if I have an X1, a Y1, and an M, I can use point slope, which is Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1, okay? At this point, even just knowing what the slope is, 
is going to narrow down your answer choices. Okay. Like there's a couple of answer choices that can be thrown out because they don't even have the right slope. But the only way to know what that new Y intercept is going to be is going to be to actually use this point. So I'm going to do Y minus negative two, which really becomes Y plus two, which I know is driving some of y'all nuts that I didn't automatically write it that way. My slope I now know is negative five over two times X minus X one, which is two. And then this is just good old algebra steps, right? I'm gonna distribute. That becomes negative five halves X. A negative times a negative would make this plus. And then here's my easiest way to do it. Five times two is 10 divided by two takes me back to five. So I have Y plus two equals negative five halves X plus five. And so now to fully isolate y, I'm gonna subtract two from both of those, and I get y equals negative five halves x plus three. And that narrows me down to an answer choice. Um, so that is how this is gonna work. There's a bunch of slides on here. If you happen to finish early, and there are some slides, by the way, that I said skip because the fact that I'm out means we're, we're not gonna cover some things right now. We're gonna wait until I'm back because they're just gonna be too confusing. So just skip the slides that have, I mean, it's hard to even see them. Um, just skip them and move on. And then if you finish the whole thing, you are gonna just start back at the beginning and work through them again. It's not gonna hurt you. You have a test. So this review should have been like a clue to you that you had a test. You have a test over this on Thursday. You're going to actually get two days of review over this. Since I'm not there, I want you to have plenty of preparation time. So you're going to review today. You'll have a different review tomorrow, and then you will test on Thursday. So make sure you know your stuff, okay? Um, you are going to turn this page in. It's the only way that I can guarantee that you were doing what you were supposed to be doing while I was gone. So I understand there are some problems that are going to be straight answers, but there is no way, kids, I do not want you doing all of this in your head. Don't do it. It's a terrible idea. You'll get the test question wrong because you'll make a mistake somewhere. Show me work. You're turning this in at the end of class. And then if you need to access it more at home and you don't finish, go in and finish it, okay? It's going to help prepare you for the test. You will do better on the test if you do the whole review. So um, just do new scratch paper. You just will turn in whatever you got done so I can kind of monitor what we're getting done in a day. Okay, all right. Review again tomorrow, a different review, not this one, and then test on Thursday. So make sure you know everything you need to know. All right, good luck.